Crisco Kid Block Party. This month is another uh, very important month, not because we get the New Year's resolutions and yeah, let's stay focused and new goals and all that. That that is key. That is so important. Uh, but it is also National Human Trafficking and Awareness Month. Ashley Chapman, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you so much, Crisco, for having me. It's great to be back. Now, you, you are one of the founders of Justice You, and you also have a new program that you have founded called Engage Together. L- last year, we talked about how all of us could individually kind of get educated on what is human trafficking and what can we do about it. Now you've taken it a step further with uh, Engage Together, where you're getting nonprofits, uh, government agencies, community a- uh, agencies, and, and how we can all be involved and work together. Can you talk about that for us, please? Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. So Justice You is all about you as the individual, right? How do how are you going to learn uh, what you need to know to know how to engage, you know, in your community? But that's part of the story. It's not the whole story. Right. So communities that are struggling to combat human trafficking and that's nearly it's every community I've ever been to across this entire country and all around the world, whether it's urban, rural, small, large. Um, they sometimes very much struggle with even understanding how to come together as a community to combat this issue and prevent it in their city. They struggle there because they don't know um, right this second who all is even working on that issue. And then also, how would they work together? So nonprofits tend to collect over in one corner and government agencies in one corner. Uh, you'll have your faith based you know, efforts in one corner. So when we come in, we say, hey, listen, Everyone is desperately needed at this table. We all have something uniquely positioned to offer. Let's show you how to work together to get it done. How can we become part of that process right now to to really dent and make people more aware of human trafficking that might be happening in their community right now? Go to engagetogether.com. We have insane amounts of resources for you. So if you are a civic club who is interested in engaging this, the first step is always to learn more, right? We've got to learn what this issue even is, really get a clear picture there, learn what it looks like in your community, and then how you're uniquely positioned to come alongside the broader community to help. That's everything Engage Together provides. So we have toolkits, we've got blogs, we've got podcasts, we've got events coming up uh, this month that are really going to focus on churches, businesses, and educators. Uh, so that's all happening, you know, this coming week. So we're really excited about all of those opportunities. But there are just so many resources there to plug into. And if you get a little lost or you're wondering where to start, just knock on our door. Uh, you can do that through the website, too. Actually, I want to ask this question because I know it's kind of hard to gauge on what the actual number may be. But approximately how many people are trafficked in some way? every year. Do we know that number? Oh, wow, Crisco. Yeah, that's an impossible figure for me to tell you. Mm. Um, and the reason is the pandemic greatly uh, impacted, you know, uh, human trafficking and pe- in ways that people don't realize. Many people thought, oh, well, human trafficking must have decreased. And the reality is it widely increased. We saw a 400 percent increase in online child sexual exploitation in our country alone last year. So that that was just a fourfold, just fourfold, over 4.1 million reports of online sexual exploitation happening uh, last year alone. Now, no one knows the numbers right now on labor trafficking victims, on, you know, adults. Uh, So we're going to be doing a lot of work this year to figure out what that number is. But just understand the way that COVID impacted this this whole national scene is it created even greater vulnerabilities for people. So housing insecurities, economic insecurities, um, drug addictions, right, that that people kind of threw themselves into all of this plays uh, and increasing vulnerabilities to human trafficking. And all of it is something that a trafficker looks to prey upon. So so we don't know those numbers yet. Uh, We'll be working hard to figure that out this year. Last year, you know, hashtag save the children kind of took over social media. Uh, There was a lot of attention brought on to what is happening with human trafficking. Where are people holding the kids that are separated here and and there? And what is really going on? And and some people said this was all politicized. Other people saying, no, man, we're actually making a difference by bringing awareness with the save the children hashtag. Ashley Chapman from Engage Together and Justice You. What did you see on your end? Did it help any? Awareness is always important, right? So if, if we're raising awareness of an issue, that's step one. Um, the problem with, you know, some things that really take off in social media uh, and in this kind of world we live in these days is that it's not always anchored in truth. 
uh, and in reality, right? So we, we tend to uh, gravitate towards things that are sensationalized, right? The very worst of the worst of the worst, you know, possible thing. Here's the deal about human trafficking. It's the worst of the worst anyway. Yeah. And, and the point is, it's happening in your local community. And it's happening in ways that you may not even realize, right? So if we, if we, if, if how we're learning about trafficking is being driven by what we're seeing out kind of what takes off, you know, in social media, and we don't anchor that with a continued knowledge about what this actually looks like, then we get pictures in our head that perpetuate myths. Things like, well, human trafficking only impacts foreign national, you know, girls who are being trafficked across borders. Is that happening? Absolutely it is. Is that the only way it's happening? No. There are over 25 types of human trafficking here in the United States alone. And the number one population who is at risk are our children in foster care and those aging out of foster care. Uh, then we are talking about, you know, not just sex trafficking is happening, but labor trafficking is happening. And I can tell you personally this last year, I ran into and personally interceded in a situation where labor trafficking was happening to an adult female about my age who was a U.S. citizen. I mean, that broke all barriers, you know, of your stereotypes. So awareness is great, but truth, you know, is important. And, and we have to anchor it there to be able to move from awareness to action in ways that will really save lives. Just so we have a clear understanding, human trafficking is not just child trafficking. It's not just sex trafficking. What are the other types of, of trafficking that humans being taken against their will or being used against their will. What all are we seeing that in right now in 2021? Yeah, great question. And it could be more important in 2021 because I, I am very deeply concerned and know we're about to see trafficking greatly increase because of the vulnerabilities that, that we experienced as a nation and that families and individuals experienced, you know, this past year. So what is uh, trafficking? Let's start there, right? So what trafficking is, boil it down. I'm a human rights lawyer. I'm not going to give you the legal definition, but what? But to understand it just as a lay person, it is the selling of a human being. It's the exploitation commercially of a human being for labor, for sexual exploitation, and for organs. So, so there are many different forms of human trafficking, and it affects every single demographic. Uh, obviously and understandably, child sex trafficking or the commercial sexual exploitation of children gets a ton of attention, and it should. But that is not the only form of trafficking happening in our country. So Polaris Project, which mans the National Human Trafficking Hotline in our country, did a study just recently, and they found 25 different types of human trafficking happening in our borders. Um, so like top five would kind of be what? So so top five forms of human trafficking in this country, you know, we, we certainly uh, commercial sexual exploitation of children. So child sex trafficking is one. The, the exploitation in our agricultural and uh, farms and factories across this nation with individuals who are foreign nationals who, by the way, overwhelmingly came here legally. So so, you know, we have this picture of, you know, something else going on, but individuals from other countries are seeking employment and they think they're seeking it in the proper channels and they're getting here sometimes even through those proper channels, but our laws actually are, are, are built to exploit them. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you're here on a work visa in this country, you're tied to that employer. And if you leave that employer for any reason, uh, you're going to be deported. So, so that gives a ton of power uh, to an employer who is abusing that power in, in issues of labor trafficking. And that's happening all across the country in our oil fields, agricultural fields, factories, et cetera. You know, locally, a, a big story made news here where an Arizona politician actually went to the Marshall Islands and was paying women to give up the rights to their kids or bring them to the States, say that they'd be adopted with good families. They go to college or whatever. When they're 18, they can go back home and be part of the family and all live together again. But just so I'm clear, because I thought that this was some type of international child trafficking something, but is this legal? Or I know it's kind of frowned upon, but where are we at with this? Where, what's the real definition of this? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And it's in, a, it's in the gray, right? So it's certainly exploiting children financially for someone's benefit. We see this not just in this situation. We, we see this a lot, actually, you know, in African nations, right? Which is why you'll see sometimes adoptions are closed uh, in, in Ethiopia for a period of time. And that's because traffickers uh, are, are 
set going to single moms in those countries and saying, hey, we've got a great place for your kid. We'll get them educated, et cetera. And all of a sudden that child gets put up for adoption. It's adopted by an American family who has no clue that this child is not an orphan. Right. And, and it's a whole ring. So it's definitely organized crime. It's definitely exploiting. Does it fall within the definition of human trafficking? It just really depends on the details. Right. But it's definitely something that has to be stopped and has to has to have greater teeth you know, than a slap on the wrist for those who are engaging in this heinous activity that is exploiting right. families in need. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. Cause especially I was thinking, man, this is happening across international waters. How can we allow this to happen? And, and then the kids, they don't know what's going on. And then they're going through life, not even knowing that they were a part of a purchase or some type of agreement that has happened that may have been fully legal or not legal at all. That's right. And, and sometimes what ends up happening, and if you've heard the phrase, uh, rehoming, which is 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 a, a heartbreaking thing you know, going on in this country. So sometimes what happens is, you know, with these international adoptions, especially those that are fraudulently, you know, uh, happening, then the family ends up with a child who maybe they don't know how to care for properly, or they and then the child is not, you know, going to attach to them because they know they have parents at home. And there's this whole black market, you know, going on in our country where people are saying, yeah, you know, I I don't want to flag to the authorities that I, I can't handle the situation. So they go and they sell that child or they give them away, you know, and to someone else who's posing as an adoptive family who wants that child who ends up being a trafficker too. So, so we've got layers of things, you know, going on here. And that's one thing I want people to understand about trafficking. This is not a siloed thing. This touches every single thing. And when we're talking about human trafficking prevention, if we do not understand how trafficking is impacting families that are falling apart, children in foster care who are aging out, homeless you know, individuals, if we don't understand those nexuses, we are never going to win the war on this issue. So understand that, get more educated about that, lean in to supporting people who are hurting in your community. And that alone will help prevent human trafficking. Ashley, I appreciate your wisdom. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, again, if they would love to participate and learn what human traffic is in more in depth and become part of the Engage Together uh, affiliation here, where can they go one more time? Yeah, go to engagetogether.com. You'll be joining an alliance, a growing alliance of over 10,000 justice advocates around the world who are passionate about this issue and passionate about working together to end it. And, and we'll be there to support you every step of the way.